howdy -o, everybody. We have a, a special event today, and it might be a weekly event. We will see. Uh, it just depends on my student if they're down with this or not. Uh, I am going to be giving a DDK lesson to none other than twitch.tv slash indie10. Okay, so this is your first ever Go lesson, right? Or you've probably had some teaching games with some other folks before? Mm -mm. No, none of that. Okay. Well, I, if I did, it would be like, I don't know, like three, four years ago. Okay, perfect, perfect. Mm -hmm. Well, we're just going to dive right on in then. Um, let me, use, I'll post a link in the Discord here for you to look at. All right, let me, let me get that open. Give me a second. Awesome, awesome. All right, opening. Yep. Cool. Let's see if we can see that. Awesome. All right, I got it open. Okay, so there are three phases to a game of Go, and uh, mm -hmm. they're very, very obviously named. Uh, the opening, the middle game, and mm -hmm. the end game. So you okay. tell the difference between them this way. Um, the opening are the first moves. They kind of take the corners. The middle game is when the first invasion happens. So that can happen early. It can happen late. But once the first invasion of something that's probably going to be yours happens, that's considered mm -hmm. middle game. Okay. And then end game... Uh, if no one resigns after the fighting in the middle, end game happens when you're taking generally points that are under under ten point moves. So seven, six, mm. five, four, three, two, one point moves, um, and that's all about calculation and you know counting the subtle differences between two positions and who gets the first move there. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're going to be discussing today is opening theory, and this is a great place to start because it's the start of the game. And it's the place that if you improve in this aspect of the game, um, other parts of the game are going to go a lot easier and more smoothly for you. Mm -hmm. So on this board that I'm showing, you can see a bunch of orange and yellow and red lines, right? Yes. Perfect. So what, how I like to think about Go is that there are hills in the opening that you want to capture so you can get the high ground. Mm -hmm. And then there are like kind of medium, medium hills or like slight dips between the big hills. And then the entire center is the great plains where the battles happen. And that's where the horses, you know, run and uh, the troops move. And it's a it's a great huge valley. And that's where all the fighting happens. Uh, so the opening of the game, you're trying to set up a camp on the high ground. Okay. So each of the red areas is a point of high ground. So that looks like the 4-4, four, four, the 3-4s, um, the 5-4s, the 5-3s, five five and the 3-3s. Three okay. So in the corners. And then there's a secondary high ground in the middle of the board. That happens around your like Q10, R10, R9, etc. And then in between those are diminishing values after that. Mm -hmm. So often you'll see a game where um, white will take one of those big points and then black will take another of those big points and white will take a third. And so this is where it gets interesting is that all of your approach moves to the corner are also in those high points um, towards those hills. And this is all a debate of who gets the most of those hills that you're camp you're putting your camp up for your high ground. So if it's black's turn, black does that knight's move approach. Mm -hmm. And then white often backs off in the knight's move. So if we go back to those red areas, you can see, you know, white has a stone here. Mm -hmm. Black approaches kind of an orange area. And then white goes back there. Okay. Additionally, um, let's say, whose turn is it? It's Black's turn. Let's say Black takes an enclosure. So now Black has enclosed kind of the entire hill in the upper left. Mm -hmm. And so the secondary hill that's between both players' hill, White has, White has a strong camp here, or a camp at least, and Black has a camp 
over here, the two X stones. So the secondary important hill that both players want, right, mm -hmm. uh, becomes really big for white. So this is where you get... Oh, is the board supposed to update? It indeed is. <laughs> indeed it is. My, disc, my, my, my channel is saying that there's no audio on, your, on the Discord in my channel. So. <laughs> anyway. Well, this is, this is beautiful, wonderful. I know. I know. Uh, I've, I've, I've been trying. I, I also have a question. Why Knights move? Okay, so before, before I forget to ask, why Knights move? Because I've been noticing uh, in a lot of my games, people are moving Knights move. And I just want to know what is the benefit or, yeah, what's the benefit of doing a Knights move rather than just a, a one step away uh, distance? Uh, one step away. How do so, you mean? Like, like right here. So say that I'm white. Okay, so instead of uh, moving right here, uh, we move like a knight's move. I know this is a bad coloring right here, but... I can't see. see what you're playing. Can you give me a coordinate? Oh, okay. Uh, F4. Or, yeah, F4. You can't, you can't see? Oh, the one space high? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, since I have control, I can't see what you play. Oh. There, I played white. You can't see that? No, because I have control of this review oh, board, oh, 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 I will oh. not be able to see what you play. Got it. Okay. Yep. I can give you control if you'd like. Troubleshooting audio isn't a bug on your stream. It's a feature. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, okay. Here. I, I don't. I, I, there we go. Okay. I'm yep. not going to touch anything. Do you want me to give you control of the board? No, no. no. Uh, I, I was just wondering, like, why do we do a knight's move rather than a uh, one space move. high yep, yep. okay mm -hmm. so you you can absolutely approach this way and mm -hmm. if we go back to this diagram um those higher approaches are still there mm -hmm. so instead of the square you're just a one higher square you can approach that way that's okay okay um oftentimes the third line is great because you're planning roots down mm -hmm. um you you get more stable when you're on the third line because you can connect to the bottom easier and if you're playing fourth line stones, they're more influence oriented because uh, your opponent can live underneath them. Mm -hmm. So fourth line stones are more influence oriented. So the reason why uh, you would maybe take a knight's move instead of the one space high is just to just to plant your flag down a little deeper into the ground to extend and, the metaphor. Okay, so and that is because we have less. The opponent has less spacing to to pretty much surround that one stone, huh? Uh, yeah, I would say that's correct. That's okay. that's a good way to think of it. Let's okay. Let's okay. Start from here. <laughs> Keep going. I'm not gonna start asking questions. No, you are totally fine. Okay. So, let's say that white played here and maybe black backed off low. Um, now white, I mean white's not gonna do this, but. White can play under here and get away with it a little easier. Mm -hmm. Going, going this way. I don't see anything. Wait, what? did you see the blue arrow? Okay. Try so I'm try looking at number here. four. Okay, I have four. Are you on number eight? Yeah, eight four, on the tree. Yep. Five. Okay, which eight? The first eight or the bottom eight? Bottom. Bottom eight. Bottom eight. Okay, there we go. Got it. Okay, I was just looking at it like number one, two, three the whole time, so it didn't refresh on my end. Mm. So even even if a black plays here, white can okay. probably make themselves alive underneath. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> Control your student. Well, no. Okay, so this is kind of <laughs> <laughs> big oof, guys. Big oof. <laughs> <laughs> so now you can see what we were talking about before is that uh, black has an enclosure in the upper left, white mm -hmm. has mm -hmm. white has a camp in the upper right. So that makes the secondary hill um, very important in the middle here, and that's why that's where you get a lot of the language around um, enclosures and extension. This smaller mm -hmm. knights move, or maybe a two, you know, one space high or two space high or two space low. Mm -hmm. This is an enclosure. And then out along the side is an extension. So this is considered an extension here. 
Mm. So the saying goes, if your opponent takes an enclosure, take away their extension. And if they take an extension, take their enclosure. Mm -hmm. So let's say black has the next move. Since white took the extension, black is going to take away their enclosure in the opening. Make sense? Yes. Cool. Uh, so again, back, back to the diagram. Uh, in your games, uh, for, for the next week, uh, mm -hmm. focus on uh, taking the big points in the opening, uh, staking your claim to the big kills, take the high ground in the opening, and another concept I'd like you to potentially practice is try to take all the opening moves before you start middle game. Save the middle game as late as you can. Okay. Make sense? So pretty much stake territory claim around the board. Don't fight just yet until you have a good surrounding area. And then go into mid game. Right, exactly. So okay. in the in the case of this game, let's say let's say that white plays this just second. Sure, why not? Okay, what number are you on? Uh, just refresh your screen and it'll follow along with me. Okay. There we go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and now, so there's still opening moves, right? Where are the opening moves that are left? I'm black, right? Correct. Well, okay. anyone, yeah, but okay. currently black. Okay, so the opening moves I would see is probably at the bottom star right here, the K4 or D10. Okay, you've got K4, mm -hmm. and you've got D10. Where else? Mm, if we're going to do something that's very similar to the top left-hand corner, then on the bottom right-hand corner, I guess we could do a knight's move down, or knight's move up, sorry. Uh, maybe C six, yeah. Or uh, F three, right? F three, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or I see. That's all I can see. Or mm, I mean, there's one more. You've probably heard it a lot if you've been hanging out on ghost streams. It's the three three C three. Yeah. Well, now why would you do C three instead of R three? It's up to you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's lots of... Oh, why would I say that instead of R3? Mm -hmm. Because C3 would seem a little redundant if you already took the 4-4 four, four corner, right? I know that, you, you know, the opponent can play in C3, but... Right. So it, currently, it... White already has enclosures here. Mm -hmm. So we kind of consider this position settled mm. for White. You can okay. still invade that 3-3, three, three, mm -hmm. but... Since both opponents have, since white's taken an enclosure and black's already approached, mm -hmm. then the further opening moves that would, C, uh, excuse me, R three would be considered more of an invasion, and C three is still kind of an opening move since black doesn't have an enclosure yet. Mm. Paragirl says he would add G seventeen. That's fair. Yeah. Agree one hundred percent. That is totally fair. Um, yep. Sorry, my my audio kind of cut out really quickly. You are totally fine. Mm. So exactly right. So in this game, uh, it is Black's turn. So Black might play like a Kobayashi type of thing and actually, you know, extend high up here if you wanted to. And White might approach. And I don't know. Black's is feeling salt. Salty Crazy might play Joseki like this and take his enclosure and White gets something along the side. And like Paragirl said, uh, we might extend along here for Black mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. somewhere. And then the fighting's going to start. <laughs> 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 okay, all the, all the opening moves are pretty much taken. But this is opening theory. It's a balance between um, enclosures and extensions and then taking each of those high ground moves um, and you can imagine this is this is mirrored all around the board in all four quad quadrants of the board. This diagram, okay. of course. So yeah, that's that's opening theory for you. <laughs>
<laughs> Got it. Awesome. I'm gonna Next. have to. I'm gonna have to rewatch this stream later on. <laughs> watch it a couple of times just to make sure I got it so you, you are okay and and the great thing about this is we are gonna go over your games now awesome. that you sent me mm -hmm. um and we are gonna walk through why I thought this was important for you specifically to learn and yeah. why this is a really big concept for your games mm -hmm. okay <clears throat> so did you get the link this is your game against go father cool yes the 7k guy Mm -hmm. I totally died on this game. This was probably my second game ever after two years of playing. So, or three <laughs> years of not playing, three years of not playing. So, all right, let's go. Okay. Yeah, let's go. Back to the beginning. We're at the beginning mm -hmm. now, right? Yep. Cool. Um, so you are black, which makes sense. So, so mm -hmm. far, so good. You're taking, you're taking those big points, the star points. That's fine. Mm -hmm. So this is... A questionable move. So another... <laughs> so move four, already questionable. And, and I'll explain why. Mm. So in general, there's another aspect to this where you want to play on the widest side of the board first. Mm -hmm. And since there are 12 spaces here and only 10 spaces everywhere else, then the bottom side is going to be the widest side of the board for you. Mm. That's what we mean by widest side. So I would expect white to approach here. Or the simpler Josekis actually start with the high approach to the 3-4. And you can expect something like this. OK, so uh, just really quickly. So did you say the whitest side or the widest? The... Widest. Widest, OK. That's, that's why I counted out the spaces for you. Yeah, got it. Yep. OK. So that's what we mean by widest, is that they're there are the most number of empty spaces between the stones. Got it. Mm -hmm. A second reason that this fourth move is, is a little questionable is just what we talked about um, previously. Mm. You're not actually taking any of the, the hills. You're not taking the high ground, and you're not contesting white's high ground. You're playing at kind of the lowest point on the side. Mm. So one would expect maybe even even a move um, like at another star point is a little better than the one you played. Mm. Uh, but really, any of the approach moves is going to be a bigger move at this point. Mm. And the or even move... just in closing, your territory is going to be bigger than... Okay. Yep. So the, the, the approaching moves are always either one space away or a knight's move away from your opponent. Is Correct. That... They're, either, okay. they're either one or two spaces away. So Okay. So I have a three spacer in there. So that was kind of like, huh, what, what the heck are you doing? Okay. Yeah. So okay. The, the two space approach is more for if you don't want to be pincered. You might still get pincered, but this, this mm. type of move says, I, please don't pincer me. <laughs> Got it. Mm. And it's generally not good for your opponent to pincer that. Okay, so. So would, S, would S6 be a okay move then? S6 is okay in some situations. Okay. Um, in this situation, it's not. Okay. So th let's say we take S6. White's going to be happy to enclose this easily since they have the 3-4. Okay. There are some situations where a move like this is good. Um, and I guess if if you're trying to build your framework along the right side, it's not a terrible strategy. Mm -hmm. But uh, for the three four stone in general, approaching that way isn't isn't ideal in most situations. Mm. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Uh, so white contested your hill, as we would expect. Mm -hmm. So then this one this one is a type of Joseki for the situation. Um, but in general, especially for double digit cues, I recommend uh playing more more territory oriented in general. Okay. Or if you're worried about your stone now, this is actually okay spacing to pincer here. Hmm. And you would you would really expect white to play a Joseki. A three three Joseki from here. Okay, so now another beginner's question right here. 
Yeah. So I, I hear you uh, say a lot of Joseki and Tanuki. I don't think you've said Tanuki yet, but I've I've been hearing those terminologies a lot. Can you just explain uh, in simple terms for me? <laughs> because I, I have an idea what Joseki if, if, and Tanuki and Fuseki is, but I, I would like to know more, just a little bit more on sure. your definition. Yep. Joseki is a set pattern that yields an even result. Okay. So these are patterns that over the 4,000 years of Go have been determined to yield an even result. Okay, so Joseki is a pattern that yields even results? Okay. Yeah, it's a set pattern. Set pattern, okay. It doesn't change. Mm. Um, oh, I mean, over time, like, Josekis get replaced by other new Josekis once we okay. discover things about the game. Um, but it is a set pattern. Okay, so wouldn't that be like a meta kind of thing? That's you know? that, it's totally a meta. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> the meta. So Joseki just goes way of saying it's the meta. All right. Cool. Yeah, I think that's a great way to. I think that's a great way to describe it. That's perfect. <laughs> like I said, I, I I need this dumbed down for me. So awesome. Got it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, and then the other one, Tanuki, means just to play away from the local situation. So your opponent played a move. And you're like, I don't need to respond to you, and you played away. That's all Tanuki means. So by playing away, you mean by playing in a different spot, right? Right. So uh, okay. so, so let's see. Black played 12, you Tanuki, and play way down here. Ah, uh, so you just you decide to go on a different end of the board. Got it. OK. Or a Correct. different area rather than facing the conflict. Got it. Yep. Mm -hmm. And Fuseki is your strategy in the opening at a whole board level. Okay. So there's, you might have heard the, the word Sanrensei. Sanrensei is a type of Fuseki. Mm. So that's this pattern here with the three stones on the three star po points. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's considered Black's Fuseki because it's their whole, whole board strategy in the opening. Okay. And then if white plays here, that's called a Chinese opening. This is a Chinese Fuseki. So this is their whole board strategy for the mm. opening. Okay. Not all of the Fuseki are named. Got it. So do, there, you ge do you generally oh. play, uh, sorry for interrupting, but do you generally yeah. play a Chinese opening, a Japanese opening, or a Korean opening? I'm assuming those are the <sighs> top three. So No, there's <laughs> only the Chinese opening is named. Um, okay. Okay. <laughs> I personally play a uh, Shusaku opening as black. So that mm. looks like dual three fours like this as black. Okay. And then I often do an approach into mini Chinese. So this okay. is a mini Chinese Fuseki. Got it. And so it's kind of a modified uh, Shusaku. Mm. And then as white, I do a dual three three Fuseki. Mm -hmm. And that's my that's my Fuseki is white. Okay. Currently. Hmm. And that's just I I like that play. I like I like that uh black is often befuddled. It also takes um it takes tempo away from black early mm -hmm. on. Um that's one of the things I like about it. Like if black approaches this, I can Tanuki and still be confident that my three three will live. Mm. So black has Fewer forcing moves. Would black opening. play there? Would black play there generally, or would he play at C fifteen more so? Uh, what what black, would he experience usually? Black's moves are here, here, and here, mm -hmm. and more questionably here. Okay. Mirrored, on okay. you know to the left and right. Okay, but he'll never play anything like C fifteen, right? C number fifteen. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, that up there, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's, cool. mi it's mirrored. That T shape is mirrored, so. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Got it. So any of this? <laughs> <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I, I am. Never mind. Keep going. You're, you're, you're great. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so yeah, if, if you want to see them on the upper, upper side, it's, it's just the, it's exactly the same. <laughs> okay. I, I did not got I I didn't get that you said beard. It, it just gotcha. registered. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so uh, we covered a few of your moves in this game. Do do do. So yeah, black, black. Excuse me, white played a little weird here. Actually, um, generally this Joseki goes this way. Mm. Something like that, and black's looking at it's running a huge area. Mm -hmm. But again, as as a double digit Q, I strongly recommend to, to just back off a nice move. It's gonna be so much easier for you mm. to start to start. Okay. Um, Hane at the attach is a proverb, but that's okay. So you've staked out your corner, so you want to keep as much of your hill as possible. And White's saying, no, I want some of this hill. So just mm. be like, nah, that hill's mine. And th they might do something like that, and then just, just back off. It's okay. Mm -hmm. But yeah, taking away their tiger's mouth, that's fine too. Okay, tiger's mouth. Yes. Please explain tiger's mouth. Yep. So... <laughs> These three stones form a tiger's mouth. The mouth is the X. Okay. And if, because if you put a stone in there, it gets devoured right away, right? Got it. Mm hmm. So that shape is the tiger's mouth. And you'll see that a lot of different places. Mm. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Mm hmm. You're welcome. Okay, so I won't harp on this corner anymore because it's just Joseki mistakes and, and you don't know them. So you don't know what you don't know. It's fine. Uh, this approach is just fine. I like the double approach. Uh, it may be a little far, but it's, it's okay. Mm. And what I mean is, like we talked about, maybe, maybe a knight's move. Or like you were talking about, a high... One space high. So for the three fours, the one space highs are a little bit easier in general mm. for double digit cues to remember. Because the, okay. the variations are shorter. There's fewer of the variations. Mm -hmm. uh, Way played really weird here. So why so, is that weird? It's weird because you have a stone here and your opponent peeped themselves. Peeped? Okay. Right. So this okay. is inviting you to cut them. Ah. Uh, so okay. this space here. Mm hmm Like let's let's imagine a scenario where white has two stones here already, and then black plays here. That's called a peep. Okay. Because it's threatening to cut. Mm. So you peep at a cut and then white would block, right? Mm. Or connect. The reason why we call it peep is because it's like a peeping hole. You just want to see if they're going to do anything in that region. Yeah, you want to see if you can okay. cut. You okay. See if you can cut. Got it. So then, uh, a big a big concept in Go is keep your stones connected and your opponent's stone disconnected. So so just disconnect their stones. It's okay. Mm. Just cut them apart. Attach. Uh, attach is playable, I guess. So we're getting, we're getting into middle game. So both you and your opponent are playing the middle game before the opening is over. So we still okay. have a bunch of opening moves here. Just mark all the opening moves left with a triangle. Mm -hmm. um, and even maybe along this side here. And like White mentioned, I mean, White took one of the opening moves, I guess, but it kind of feels like an invasion as well. Mm. But yeah, that's why that's why we went over opening theory, and I'm encouraging you to play the opening moves in the opening. If you're worried about your stones, that's fair. I like the cap, but I I would like to see a preparation move first. Mm. Keep pressure on the white stone, kind of drive them into your wall. But that's, I mean, that's beyond beginner strats. So you're playing just. <laughs> no, I mean you got to be mindful, like, of where you are, and 
I, as a teacher, have to be mindful that, you know, you are getting back into Go after a really long time away and you didn't spend a lot of time on it in the first place, right? So, yeah. Yeah. So I'm not going to, I am not going to point out every single thing that I would consider a mistake in this game. I'll just let you know oh, that right away. Just, just do that. <laughs> just do that. I want to know all the mistakes. No, it's overwhelming. As I think as a beginner, it's overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> to just be harped on, like, no, this is wrong. No, this is wrong. No, this no, is wrong. you gotta, you gotta. The the way I learn best, I'm gonna tell you right now, is for you to harp on me, saying, telling me this is a bad move. Don't do this again. <laughs> By all means, just just dish it out on me. That that is a okay. I'm not gonna run away. I already, I'm already <laughs> exposing myself. <laughs> no, that's fair. Um, so this is fighting, and you just need a little more practice with your reading. Yeah. Yeah, so that's why this that's why this doesn't work out for you. You just need a little more practice and experience. Mm -hmm. And that's a big reason, like, for the next week, I don't want you to focus on everything to get better. I want you to focus on your opening to get better. Okay. And that's another reason I don't, I don't want to harp on everything, mm -hmm. uh, because I want you to get one thing, and then we'll move on to the next one. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> just like just like you're a math teacher right yeah like a, a student who's just learning adding you wouldn't like try to teach them to multiply right away oh man that's the best way to learn no, yeah no i get it yeah yeah mm. okay so i think uh this is as far as we're gonna get with this particular game so let cool. me let i gotta me crawl before i walk yeah you can you can think of it that way there's just mm -hmm. There's just a lot to this game. Mm. And as you develop your skills, like different things become apparent mm. and you're more ready to understand the lessons as they come. So just based on this game, would you confirm that I am definitely a 15Q level? Somewhere between 15 and 20. Yep. Yep. Okay. All right. Cool. Let's uh, go. Okay. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's move on to the next one. Oh. oh. Tim Sal. Yes, I remember this game. I thought I was losing in this game. So. Hmm. Okay. And and again, we're going to reinforce these opening lessons. So far, mm -hmm. so good. Everybody mm -hmm. took four fours. That's great. Okay. They took a three three. Mm, okay. So let's teach you a couple of the most basic three three Joseki right now. Okay. Um, it's super easy. Got it. Black three threes. White blocks one way or the other mm. black's gonna extend white's gonna hane mm. black's gonna hane white's gonna extend black's gonna extend again you think you can hane but you can't you gotta extend one more mm. okay so you'll have three stones in a row don't hane don't do it i know you want to but don't okay. um <laughs> black's gonna hane white's gonna hane black's gonna connect this is the most basic. You lose Sente with this one. So a lot of times in modern play, we don't play this one, but this is the easiest one. What's Sente? Sente is, it's like tempo in chess. It's a forcing move. Or you lose the, Sente is the ability to play wherever you want. Influence. Is Sente like influence or like control nope. of the board? Sente is... Uh, being able to play where you want to play. So okay. if your opponent's move is sente, mm. then you have to respond to them. Got it. Okay. Um, if your move is sente, then your opponent has to respond to you. And mm. if you have sente, you can play wherever you want. Okay. So it's it's used in a couple different ways that way. Got That's it. opposite of gote. If you play a gote move, your opponent does not have to respond to you. So all the opening moves are like Gote moves. Mm, no. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Sen Sente is is a forcing move or move freedom. So okay. it's exactly like tempo in chess. Mm. And then yeah. Okay. So so I say that we lose Sente because now that now that we've got to move eleven. Black mm -hmm. can play wherever they want. So they have Sente. Okay. All the moves up until here, 
uh, are forcing moves or sente moves. So you would expect everyone to respond this way. So it's not always going to go this way. There's there's an additional uh, one that's fairly simple to learn. Black still extends, but white mm -hmm. plays the knight's move. Black extends again. White plays the knight's move. Black hanes, and white can white can tanuki. So let's say white tanuki. Black plays here, and you connect. Mm. Depending on who has sent day. <laughs> mm. But yeah, those are learning three three dosekis. You're you're just gonna run into them a lot. You'll just have to look it up and practice remembering it. Mm. Okay, here's a... You played a 3-3, very fun. They ignored you. Mm -hmm. So again, you're going to want to just take part of the corner. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so I'm, I'm going to draw on the board again. This kind of highlights that we want um, these kind of areas. And so moves like here and here kind of miss the boat. Mm. So back to our lesson of kind of the big moves in the opening. We have all of these opening moves here that are kind of, you know, going unplayed. Uh, we're going to play this for a little bit. Oh, yeah. You're experimenting with those three threes. That's very fun. I like it. You're like, my opponent did it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to get better at it. But the main reason why I did this whole variation, at least what was going through my mind while I was playing this, is that mm -hmm. I, I, because you told me to do a lot of Sumego uh, in my off time, if I'm not playing a game, then at least practice with life and death situations. So... In my mind, I was like, okay, well, I need to stop him from creating eyes. How do I do that? So I was, I was playing stones in the places where I felt like, you know, uh, I could either capture or I can prevent him from creating an eye. So, Gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. That, that was so, my thought process, and that's why I moved in those positions. I, so. I feel like I did you a bad by saying, <laughs> yeah, do five minutes of two mega a day, but I didn't tell you why. <laughs> So Tsumego is all about learning reading, and you need reading in the middle game fighting. Got it. Your opening isn't a Tsumego problem. <laughs> it can be for like these 3-3 three, three vari variations, mm -hmm. uh, but on a 19 by 19 board, it is not going to be white to play and kill until after you've already surrounded your opponent. Okay. So it's it's going to be impossible to to kill them that way. So attachment moves are fantastic uh, if you're weak in the area. Mm -hmm. But definitely, again, we want to take these big opening moves before we do this middle game, middle game fighting. OK. And if I remember, you won this game, right? So yeah. Yeah. Like nice. Yeah, I, I was just trying to prevent myself from getting captured the whole time. Yep, yeah. That's why I thought I was on the losing end because I was always responding to him. And so... Absolutely. So yeah, this is all middle game fighting... And I'm not I'm not going over the fight a lot again because that's going to be reading experience for you, mm -hmm. and then um, we we need to fix up your opening just so the middle game fighting goes better for you in general. Mm. Because I do have a really fighty fighty aggressive style, mm -hmm. um, so I love this fighting spirit that you're showing, and I love that you're trying to kill your opponent. It's fantastic. <laughs> I'm never going to discourage that. Uh, oh, and well, then your you, opponent resigned. Yep. Yeah. Well, you do see my mentality in this in this fight right here was that my left chain, the very left chain, is about to die. And so uh, the only way that I could think of trying to make it live is by cutting his uh, secondary chain on the F line. 
off. Yeah. Hence why mm-hmm. I started surrounding in that position. And I, I cut him off from the main uh, big chain. And then yeah. I, I saw that he was encroaching me. Uh, he was about to surround that leftmost chain. That Hence why I started to surround him instead. And so the Absolutely. whole time, the whole time I was just trying to surround him while keeping my uh, liberties open. So... Absolutely. And it totally paid off. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I totally get it. I think it's great. I think it's great. Um, Thanks. So as as a teacher, I have to balance <laughs> the encouraging you when you do something really well, because you, you did do this fighting pretty well. Um, oh, thanks. And also telling you, hey, but this other area, hey, maybe we can we can make it go even better. Like instead of winning by 100 points, <laughs> we can win by 200. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kilton Ninja says, can we rewind to K12? If I were indie, I'd probably find it useful to see what could happen if that didn't happen. Okay, okay, yeah. Uh, let me find K12. Boop, 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 boop. I'm hoping Kilted Ninja is enjoying the total awesome demolishment of my thought process here. <laughs> no, Kilted Ninja I'm... was my very first student. So... Oh no way! Awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he knows what what it's what's what here. Awesome. Is he Scottish? I uh, I I think so. Okay, cool. Kilted Ninja, are you Scottish? Let me know. Or let dad know so he could tell me. So K-12, let me see. K-12. Oh, okay. So maybe maybe he's talking about... I'm Scottish. I Yeah, he's Scottish. Awesome. I. He might be talking about the cut here. Or even maybe this cut here. On K-12? I'm not sure. Yeah, we played K twelve a few moves from now. Oh, okay. Sorry, my bad. Okay. <clears throat> so I guess keep going forward yep. until I hit K twelve. Right. So you ah, played right here. You mm-hmm. played the connection. Yep. Yeah. And of course, you must have seen if if you hadn't, if you'd played away, then you know it's just dead. So. Yeah. Well, that's why I connected it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Well done. Well done. Okay. Uh, I believe we have. I don't think we're going to review the nine by name game. I hope that's okay with you. Or I guess we can yeah, if you'd like. No, that's fine. That's fine. Up uh, to you. Let's You're the teacher, so <laughs> let's. All right. Let's see how long this next one takes. Uh, to do a quick review. All right. Mm, I think I lost this one. Uh, yeah. It was weird how it stopped. It stopped on counting. Yes. Even so, though none of it's finished. Yeah, no, no, no. So what happened was that I screwed up, and I was playing on my iPad, so I actually misclicked. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't click the coordinate uh, cleanly enough, and so it, it jumped one of my stones. And then I, I texted the guy uh, in, in the chat box. I was like, hey, you know, I just wanted to let you know I did misclick, but don't worry, that's my fault. I'm just going to play from that point on. And then oh, okay. he offered he offered to undo it, but because I'm still new to OGS, I didn't know what was going on. So I clicked the pass button, and I guess he also clicked the pass button, and that's why I ended the game. So okay, okay, mm-hmm. that makes sense. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Okay, we are black. Great, you're taking dual four fours. That's just fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, White played something a little weird here. Did he? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. The the kick is super weird in this position. Okay. So I would I would ex- again expect something more like this, and then white plays away, mm. pretty much anywhere. Something like that. Mm. Uh, this kick is is strange. So most likely you'll drop down here. White will do this, and you'll take an extension here. That that would be an expected variation. Mm. Let's see what happened. <laughs> well, okay, one one space. That's fine. Um. Yep. Yeah, I I wouldn't bother turning here. Mm. It's okay that you did, but um, you want to save. Okay, here's another go word. Aji. Aji. Okay. Aji is um. I guess it's defined as aftertaste in Japanese, okay. and what that means is there's there's something there 
that's not resolved, but it's still definitely there. Okay. <laughs> and you can think of it as an aftertaste of a position. Like, you, you eat in kiwi, you know, and, and afterwards, like, you taste that different flavor. Mm-hmm. But you know it's from a kiwi, but it's still definitely a flavor that you taste. It's like that. <laughs> okay. So, okay. So in this position, if we played at one, um, the aftertaste would be this this move here, or this so, funny here. So would that that's where the black would move on the next turn. At, nope. At those... It's you just leave it there, and uh, later in the game it might become important. Got it. Mm. So it's a flavor that's there, even though it's not really there. Potential problems. That's a good way to put it, Peregrill. Or potential... Uh, Situations. Just possibilities, yeah. Got you want to leave your possibilities as open as you can. Ah, uh, so you don't want to... Okay, so so another way to say it is that, uh, you know, if you play poker, you don't want to reveal your hand too soon. You want your opponents to think of all the other moves that you might be playing right. before you play Got it. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. 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 Yeah. Aftertaste is what it means, Starduck. As awesome. far as I know, that's what I learned. Yep. Awesome. Uh. Okay. So, you know, you have these stones. Let's make a base. Let's make a base along the left hand side instead. Mm -hmm. This move, it's okay. I mean, it's playable. But I would, I would, as a double digit Q, I think. It was would be more valuable for you to make a base. Mm. Uh, they made an approach, so go ahead and claim your big hill. Mm. What did I do? I forgot what I did. I think you play I, I played. You one. played a big move too. This is a big move, and it actually works really well with these stones. So, you know, I can't criticize this move too much. Mm. Uh, yeah, that's probably okay. What did we play? Ooh, okay. Gotta make. You gotta push push them around a little bit. They might play here, and then I would just take the three three. Mm. From that, I always learned it as latent potential, but from Daniel's teachings, I relearned it as sowing chaos. Drop the stones, <laughs> move on, forget them. Come I back to them later and use them for A plus bamboozles. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. I love it. I love it. So yeah, this oh, uh, we're, this stone we're is just a little chaos. Mm. It's a little too. It's just in a not a great great place. It's too loose. It doesn't punish white enough. It might have worked out for you though. I think it worked out for you better than maybe I'd expect. Okay. All right. It's too soft. Yeah, that's a good way to put it, Peregrine. Yeah, and then you took the three three. Okay, this. So we have a variation here that's similar to the one I was I showed you, but it's different in some important ways. Let's go back. So remember this I, position here. I think I cut, and that's what was wrong. White has this wall here mm -hmm. and this wall here, and they're threatening to surround this whole area. And they're pretty mm -hmm. strong on both sides, right? Mm -hmm. So now we're going to go back to the variation that's similar but not the same. In this case... Black is is the one who's strong here, and then will will be strong here, mm -hmm. and then white doesn't have those walls, so white doesn't have all that potential to surround everything in this variation. Mm. So that's how that's how they're similar but different. Got it. In essence, white got the same things. They got some area on the lower left side, and you got a three three, and you lived on the top left, but the potential changed. Mm. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, no, it totally does. And I saw him, tr I saw those, those two walls while I was playing, and I believe in the further game, I tried to live in the, between those two walls, but I failed miserably at it. Yeah, so. yeah. They're just too strong. Yeah. And you got to keep running, and they keep, they keep gaining the more you run. So it's difficult. Hmm. Uh, yep, yep. That's all fine, and we connected. Good. Hmm. Boop, boop. I would keep your opponent separated. You were worried about this cut, yeah? Yeah. 
So because yeah, it, I, would, I, I saw that. Yeah. Nope. Not there. Okay. Mm. Here we go. Mm. And then it's it's a fight, but it's not a terrible fight. But yeah, staying connected is important. So yeah, we can play this. And I think this is where the game cut off, right? Soon. Uh, seems like it might have been. Yeah, that's where the yep. misclick happened, right there. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to our opening again and look at the first deviation where we didn't play an opening move. All of these are opening moves. That's great. Yeah, that's still kind of an opening move. That's the first deviation. So our opening moves, again, from this point are in this area, this area, this, this, this. Oh, any of these, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I really want to drill this, drill this in for you. Um, where where the opening moves are it's it's important okay any of these and then of course those so we we missed we missed them all <laughs> um <laughs> yes <laughs> beginners chaotic luck i guess no so this is okay i mean that's still an opening move that's good okay uh, that was that was loose, and again, we want to play opening moves in the opening, so you can ignore white and just play another opening move, right? Okay. Any of these? Any of these? Again, the whole. Let me let me just quick circle them all. Okay. It'll be a little faster. <gasps> um. Yeah. So you can actually ignore that that C C ten if you want to. Okay. Yeah. C ten. Or just make a a base. Yeah. Mm. So now you guys are already fighting, um, and I would say, st stop it. <laughs> stop, okay. <laughs> stop it. Stop. Stop fighting, guys. I would say if you're really worried about your group, make a base, mm. and then take another opening move like the 3-3. Three, three. It's mm. going to be optimal. You know, and we went over that several times, so. So as a beginner, uh, for me... Should I still be playing on a 19 by 19 board or should I go to 13 by 13, 9 by 9? 19 by 19. 19 by 19? So, okay. Yeah. Okay. We're teaching you, we're teaching you full size games. Um, 9 by 9 is great if you want to practice your tactics mm -hmm. and like your, your life and death and, and your local fighting. Okay. 13 by 13 has more of that, but 19 by 19 is overall strategy as well as tactics mm. and if you're trying to be good at go uh 19 by 19 will you know the skills you learn in a 19 by 19 will apply to all the other ones okay um but if if you just want a quick game to practice your tactics and reading uh mm -hmm. go ahead and play a smaller game mm -hmm. uh because it'll go faster right the nine by nines go way faster uh but definitely 19 by 19 um, depending on your time, again, I ask that you play about two or three per week that we have lessons, mm -hmm. uh, just so I have something to look at and see how you're doing and where you're going. Okay. And then, um, figure out, tailor a lesson just for you. Okay, um, cool. And it might be a lesson that I've taught someone else, like this one has been, um, mm -hmm. just because every double digit cue needs to learn opening theory. <laughs> <laughs> And every time I take on a new student and I look at their games, it turns out, hey, we we have some big gains we can make in the opening. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, definitely 19 by 19. Uh, do you have any questions for me about other go terms or, oh, I should assign you homework. So, again, two to three lessons <laughs> for the yes. week. Yes. Um, five minutes of a day of two mego. Just five minutes. Okay. Five minutes. Um, okay. And how you need to do the Tsumego, don't guess, 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 click, click, click. Mm. Place the stones in your mind all the way to the end mm -hmm. and then try it. Okay. Okay? That's okay. It's very important. Don't just guess, 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 unless you're just trying to learn patterns. Like some of the guess, guess, guess is okay, but do your best to place all the stones in your mind first. Okay. Well, I, I've been 
doing that except on the harder ones, uh, mm -hmm. especially with the daily problems when they're like a medium or hard difficulty. Like right. I have no clue what they're looking for oh, or what okay. I should be looking for. So that's why I would be guess, 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 just right. to see what they're looking for. In your daily problems, don't even bother with the medium and hards yet. Okay. And then in your Tumego Pro app, I assume that's what you're using. Yes. Um, go to like the second page or whatever, where mm -hmm. you can see the whole set of beginner problems. Okay. And go through those because there's like mm -hmm. 50 or 60 of them, right? So in yeah. your five minutes a day, just go through those. Don't even touch the medium and hards yet. Okay. Well, you gotta I, learn. I, okay. okay. You gotta learn the easy ones. Hmm. Well, what if I already finished one of the, the first 50 problems? Should I go on to the next 50 or keep replaying the first 50? Uh, either one, whatever you, whatever you find fun. Okay. <laughs> awesome. So, uh, even if you've done them before, do them again mm -hmm. and just okay. get them faster. So mm -hmm. the thing with that five minutes a day is when you go back through, it might be a lot faster. So you get more of them done in the five minutes. Right. And mm -hmm. then you're, you're training your intuition as well. Mm -hmm. You can also use sumegohero.com. I love sumegohero.com. Sumego-hero.com. Oh. Okay. Um, use that, and it'll it's gamified, so it gives you lives that you lose when you miss a Sumego, and there's beginner problems there, and there's there's a whole bunch of them, and it's online, so you don't have to download a special app or anything. You can play it anywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not sponsored, but it's a friend. It's a friend of my channel. Oh, okay, um, cool. Yeah, Stikerson, who who is around, uh, made the website and. I have a Tsumego Hero video series that I created for fun, and he's really supported that. So, right yeah. here, YouTube. I see yeah. it. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Awesome. So, Tsumegohero.com. Check it out. It's team made of paragirls. Nice. <laughs> uh, so, oh, and the final part of your homework is learn one Joseki. Um, you can learn it at josekapedia.com. There's a Joseki dictionary on onlinego.com. Okay. Uh, there's various Joseki resources, but pick something that you see in your games. Mm -hmm. So maybe a 4 4 Joseki or a 3 3 jo 3 3 Invasion Joseki. Learn okay. it and play it in your games. Awesome. <laughs> so well, we'll do that. Pretty easy homework. So three games, two to three games, a Joseki. Variation and Sumego, Sumego Hero for the week. Yep, five minutes a day. Got it. Cool. Cool. Uh, okay, awesome. any questions for me? Any any like terms or anything that you've been confused about for a long time? Or no, nope. um, I already asked. I asked most of them today. So sweet. Yep. Awesome. Uh, same time next week. Work for you. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. for sure. <laughs> Hope everyone enjoyed it. <laughs> No, it's good fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I like teaching, and I'm excited to see how how you do and where you go with Go, and yeah, it'll be fun. I love, I just love watching people learn and grow, so this is awesome. real good for me, too. Awesome. Well, can't wait for next week. Let's see how well I do this week. So thanks again for everything. Yeah, you're very welcome. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Well, see you, chat. <laughs> Laters. <laughs> Laters. That was very fun. Uh, to collaborate with Indie Tin that way. All right, and uh, if anyone in chat here is uh, also interested in lessons, I know we have some uh, who have already taken lessons from me, so uh, there is a link there. You can book on simplybook.me and uh, book your lessons that way, so that is an option. All right, everybody, thanks for hanging out with me. Take it easy. <laughs>